There are a few different acyanotic heart diseases that are also worth uh, knowing about. So this is sort of rote learning, to be totally honest, um, but uh, it's, it's worth just having a summary just on one slide. So an atrial septal defect um, usually causes an ejection systolic murmur heard loudest at the left sternal edge. A VSD, on the other hand, causes a pan-systolic murmur that's also at the left sternal edge. An AVSD, a couple of key points to remember, is that it may lead to pulmonary hypertension because it uh, places more of a strain on the right side of the heart as well. And it's classically associated with Down syndrome. So it's the most common cardiac abnormality that is seen in Down syndrome. So patent ductus arteriosus is a condition in which the ductus arteriosus remains open uh, beyond one month, so it normally closes before then. Um, the good thing is, is that it's usually relatively easy to close, so by giving something that inhibits prostaglandin synthesis, like an NSAID such as indomethacin, it can actually close the ductus arteriosus. And it usually causes a machinery-like murmur just below the left clavicle. The reason that these acyanotic heart diseases are important is that it can cause certain complications. So it can lead to heart failure, so um, same manifestations really as in adults, um, but obviously in children where it can cause shortness of breath. Um, it can affect their growth as well because their feeding may be impaired by the shortness of breath that they uh, experience whilst they're feeding. They may get recurrent chest infections as well. And finally, having some sort of structural abnormality within the heart does predispose them to infective endocarditis uh, going forwards. Another condition I want to just briefly touch upon is something called Eisenmenger syndrome. Um, it's pretty rare, but it is something that's very important because it has a, a very high morbidity and mortality rate, and it's something that is very difficult to treat. Um, and it's also quite useful um, as a concept to remind yourself of how the physiology of, of shunts work as well. Uh, so it's a condition that usually presents around 20 to 40 years, and it presents quite dramatically really with heart failure, cyanosis, and erythrocytosis as well. And the treatment, uh, you can't really do a huge amount aside from a heart and lung transplant. So the way it works is as follows. So if there is some sort of uh, septal defect, there will initially be a left to right shunt. So this is because the left side of the heart is, is naturally stronger than the right, and hence the direction of flow through that defect will be from the left to the right. So this will in turn mean that there is actually more blood than expected going in to the pulmonary trunk and to the pulmonary arteries. So this leads to some level of pulmonary vascular injury, and as a response, as like an adaptive response, you will get an increase in pulmonary vascular resistance. So if the pulmonary vascular resistance increases, then the right heart is going to have to pump much harder to get blood through to the lungs. And over time, the right heart will become hypertrophic and it will reach this threshold at around you know, 20, 20 to 40 years of life where the right heart is actually stronger than the left heart. And this means that that shunt gets reversed and you get deoxygenated blood from the right side of the heart going through the defect into the left side of the heart, and this is why it causes cyanosis. Music